Okay, so I, I fixed our, our first neuron here. So this is neuron number one, right? And it's going to be stimulated, right? Um, by lots of in, inhibitory and excitatory uh, you know, inputs, chemical inputs at um, you know, these uh, axodendritic synapses up here you know, on the dendrites. You know, there'll be some, let's say, axosomatic synapses here, but a decision will then be made you know, at the axon hillock if we reach our you know, uh, threshold potential of minus 55 you know, millivolts more negative inside versus the out, we're going to suddenly swing open all of those voltage-gated sodium and potassium channels and initiate an action potential that'll start propagating, working its way, you know, in sodium out, potassium all the way down, you know, to the axon terminal. And this is the terminus of the first neuron here, the axon terminal. And it's going to form, let's say, an axodendritic synapse with, a, you know, a, a dendrite membrane on neuron number two right over here. So the image that I've got shown here, you know, on, on your, on your uh, class screen is actually, um, you know, basically of that connection between the presynaptic axon terminal membrane and the postsynaptic, um, you know, dendrite uh, membrane. So at an axodendritic synapse. And you can see that there are a number of structural features that sort of distinguish these various components of a synapse, which consist again of the presynaptic membrane, you know, the axon terminal, the, uh, the synaptic gap or cleft, um, you know, between them, which is actually bridged by a, uh, you know, typically a, um, some kind of a perineuronal net, like there's going to be some kind of a, a matrix of proteins that are extruded, like girders that come out of, you know, this, this axon terminal membrane and then link with, you know, other proteins and sugars that are attached on the other. So it's a, it's actually like a, a you know, scaffolded kind of a space, presynaptic versus postsynaptic here. Um, and, but there are some structural features that sort of distinguish this presynaptic, this cleft, and then also the postsynaptic membrane. Um, at the presynaptic membrane, instead of voltage-gated sodium and potassium channels, we find these presynaptic membranes actually are studded with presynaptic... Um, voltage-gated calcium channels. So they operate on a similar principle. They're voltage-gated, right? So at the resting potential, before the arrival of an action potential here, these voltage-gated calcium channels are in a closed conformation. There's no pore open to allow for calcium to flow through. But upon the arrival of an action potential, that depolarization, we're going to see that there's a threshold potential for the voltage-gated calcium channels too. So they'll swing open also around at around minus 55. Uh, and there's a number of different types of voltage-gated calcium channels, but in general, these voltage-gated calcium channels swing open upon the arrival of an action potential. And then we're going to see calcium as a result is going to rush inside the axon terminal. We're going to see that it's driven largely by the concentration gradient force because calcium, it turns out, is a very, uh, you know, um, powerful ion, like inside a cell, it can, it can bind to things quickly and then initiate a whole host of what we call biochemical cascades, like one chemical binding the calcium and then it changes its shape and then it can go off and bind to something else and change its shape or activate something else and it can set off these, you know, pretty significant intracellular uh, cascades of biochemical, you know, responses. So there isn't a lot of free calcium inside the presynaptic terminal membrane, and there's a lot more outside, you know, from dietary sources. So the concentration gradient force will drive it from the outside in. In addition, it's minus 55, you know, when you depolarize to the threshold for these voltage-gated calcium gels. So when they swing open, it's still negative on the inside. So the electrical force, you know, calcium is a positive ion in high, you know, higher concentration outside versus in, um, you know, the positive will be attracted to the the negative um, 55 on the inside of that membrane. So calcium will stream inside. And what's going to happen next is, you know, within that presynaptic terminal, another really key sort of structural feature that identifies it is the presence of all of these membrane-bound spheres. There's lots of these little spheres. They're called vesicles. And these vesicles, you know, it's phospholipid bilayer bound with proteins embedded in them, some very critical proteins. Um, these are, you know, transporter proteins. They're actually called vesicular transporters because they're located inside the vesicle, those spherical membrane-bound vesicles. 
that are found at the presynaptic axon terminal. Um, lots of these sacs that have these transporters that are specifically, you know, sort of uh, designed to bring in, you know, utilizing ATP to fight concentration gradient forces, right? To pack those vesicles with neurotransmitter, with specific neurotransmitters. And we'll talk about, you know, some of those vesicular transporters that are important, um, you know, with uh, various transmitter systems as we, as we continue uh, in the next few weeks. Um, so the presynaptic terminal, you know, uh, at the end of the axon, you know, it's the arrival of the axon, uh, you know, uh, the, the action potential uh, studded with voltage-gated calcium channels that open upon the arrival of that deep polarizing action potential and allow calcium entry. Also, all of these membrane-bound vesicles, and then right up at the axon terminal membrane, the presynaptic terminal membrane, there's a line of these vesicles that are like, there's a row of these or a set of these vesicles that are very closely, you know, uh, opposed to the actual membrane itself. Remember, the vesicles are phospholipid bilayer, and then the actual, um, you know, axon terminal membrane, the presynaptic terminal membrane is also phospholipid bilayer, and there's a whole series of proteins. It's, it's, they're collectively referred to as the docking complex. There's like 28 or 29 of these things. They form a very complex sort of docking of the vesicles right up against the presynaptic terminal membrane. So they pinch off a little piece of the vesicular membrane and a little piece of the actual, you know, um, axon terminal membrane and bring them kind of close together. So the, the vesicles are sort of docked at the presynaptic um, axon terminal there, filled with neurotransmitter that's being pumped inside, brought inside, transported inside by the vesicular transporters that are utilizing ATP to fight concentration, to pack those sacs, those vesicles with neurotransmitter. Um, and then the cleft, you know, is between, you know, the two, you know, membranes, the presynaptic axon terminal membrane and the postsynaptic membrane. It's bound, remember, by the membrane uh, of astrocytes of certain glial cells that also wrap membranes around capillaries that come in the area. Um, and then the postsynaptic membrane, which, you know, is typically a dendrite, so it's typically an axodendritic synapse we're talking about, but we could have an axoaxonic or an axosomatic. Um, but uh, basically, it often has a, a thickening, actually, on that membrane. Um, they call it a postsynaptic density, particularly at excitatory synapses, at axodendritic synapses, because that postsynaptic dendrite membrane, right, that's going to receive the message, is packed with receptor proteins that, you know, reach large, you know, you know portions of their structure, their protein structure out into the synaptic cleft, you know, so they can actually bind the released neurotransmitter. Um, and they also have, you know, portions that are, you know, that traverse the membrane then that extend on the intracellular side. So there's sort of a thickening or a what they call a postsynaptic density there. So we're going to be talking about all these, you know, various components, but synaptic transmission really involves, you know, the arrival typically of an action potential, depolarization to threshold, you know, the the opening of a voltage gated calcium channel, or many voltage-gated calcium channels, the entry of calcium, which I, you know, suggested responds and reacts with chemicals on the inside very quickly. It does so at the axon terminal mem or axon terminal two, and the, the chemical that it binds to gets activated and then, you know, interacts with that docking complex of proteins. And what happens is the vesicle membrane, which is brought very close, you know, by the docking complex proteins, you know, some of them are embedded in the, the, the vesicle membrane. Some of them are embedded in the uh, actual you know, cell membrane. It brings those two membranes close and they fuse. So suddenly you've got like a hole from the vesicle you know, out into the synaptic cleft because you know, the, the membrane is sort of contiguous or you know, with, the, uh, with the, the presynaptic terminal membrane. So you've got a lot of tightly packed in a neurotransmitter that those vesicular transporters have been working hard to get in those vesicles, right? Before the arrival of the action potential. And so, and outside the cleft, you have, you know, relatively little neurotransmitter. So the concentration gradient force will drive it out. So the presynaptic membrane is a really critical, you know, site for functionally um, kind of linking the arrival, you know, by uh, the, uh, converting the arrival of uh, an action potential, you know, the depolarization you know, into the release of a chemical neurotransmitter that can then traverse that cleft, 
and then act at some of those receptors that I, receptors that are here in our uh, postsynaptic density in the postsynaptic cell. Mm-hmm.